So first of all, there will be a change of time from uh, next week, and the lecture will be at 11.30 in the morning. Um, so before I start what uh, I want to say today, I would like to better explain what is uh, O of O of P of 1, the famous uh, uh, tautological uh, um, line bundle on uh, Pn. So the, the starting point, uh, I will explain essentially on P1 and on Pn uh, you can uh, do by exercise to generalize everything. So on P1, as usual, is U1 union U2, where Ui is isomorphic to C with coordinate Zi, and uh, U1 intersection U2 is equal uh, to uh, uh, to what? To GM to C minus zero. And the way these two things are glued together is sending uh, Z1 in 1 over Z2. So this is the explicit description of P1. And you may make the exercise to do the, the explicit description of Pn. You will have many coordinates and they are all glued together by similar laws you will have zi is equal to uh, uh, 1 over zj. No, it, it's long. It's on, it's on list. Anyway, if you cannot do the exercise on Pn, try to P2, and then P, Pn should be work. And if you cannot, just tell me and we'll do it. Now, the main observation is that given how can you describe a line bundle here? So the first thing to say, I can describe a divisor here. And a divisor, it will be a sum, sum of ni pi. OK, and uh, if uh, you, you don't think about what happens at infinity, you can look to the functions product of uh, um, let's say z1 minus pi to the power ni. And this will be a function which is defined, suppose that pi's are all on a1. This will be a function defined over a1, over u1. And uh, so you can call it, uh, let's say, f1. And you can consider u1. And then, if you want to pass to u2, you need a function u2, f2, and uh, uh, in, in order to obtain a Cartier divisor over this variety. And uh, you want that f1 divided by f2 is a unit inside uh, inside the intersection. So if F1 is equal uh, to um, a, oh, let me, OK, no, OK, it's OK. A n to the power n plus uh, z1 to the power n plus a0, in order to obtain something like that, you will need that F2, for instance, is equal uh, uh, to A0, Z2 to the power n, plus A n. And in this case, F2 divided by F, uh, let's hope so, F1 divided by F2 should be equal to uh, something like 
1 divided by z2 to the power n or the inverse. <laughs> it could be z2 to the power n now. OK. And you see that this is a global function in u1 intersection u2. So it is defined a, is, is defined a co-cycle. So the point is that if you choose the, the covering u given by u1, u2, and the g1, 2 equal 1 over z2, you are obtaining the data defined a co-cycle so a line bundle over P1. And this line bundle is called O of 1. And what is a global section of O of 1? Is the set 1, 1, linear forms A1Z plus B which in order to uh, remember if you have z z1 sorry z1 equal to x1 divided by z uh, by y1 which are the the how you call it uh, the the homogeneous coordinate over um over over p1 you have the gamma O of 1 is the linear forms A1X plus B1Y. So you see that these are homogeneous linear forms in the homogeneous coordinate. OK? And uh, you can understand very well what is gamma P1 O of N. Gamma P1 of O of N will be what? A polynomial of degree N. So, homogeneous polynomial in uh, x1, x and y. And when uh, you want, uh, you know that z1 is this and z2 is y1 divided by uh, x1. So to pass from one to the other is very easy. You just it's just the usual uh, thing that you learned when you learned about what is uh, the projective space to homogenize in one direction or on the other. This becomes this language in uh, this context. In some way, you always have to think that everything. Uh, homogeneous polynomial of degree n, sorry. And what is, uh, suppose that you have uh, some f x y x y inside here, so it would, it would be an effective Cartier divisor over Pn corresponds to an effective Cartier divisor over P1. What is the effective Cartier divisor? You take Fxy equal to 0. This is uh, a homogeneous polynomial uh, in two variables. You can split as a product of this will be product of uh, alpha 1 x min plus uh, minus uh, beta uh, 1 uh, alpha i beta i y to the power uh, n i. And then uh, from this, uh, you construct very easily uh, the device. It's just the one of which, oh, we can do it better. Let Sorry, 
now we, we, we this was for n positive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to understand uh, what uh, we are doing is when uh, you do this, you can consider f of x divided by y 1. This will be uh, f, uh, no, let's say f of z, and uh, you take the zeros of this polynomial, and this with, with multiplicity. And now you can uh, do O of minus 1. So O of 1 is the linear, uh, is the linear, a linear subspaces, and uh, uh, in uh, on PN it will be the linear subspaces. So and, and you can do everything exactly in the same way, and uh, you can find uh, very well, uh, very easily. And it's a nice exercise to try to do it. Is uh, to describe the cocycle the, uh, on PN. You will have uh, on P two. You will have uh, three charts. And you have uh, to, to write the cocycle, and they will be. It's nothing is mysterious. It's, this is not <laughs> the mysterious uh, the part the mysterious part of mathematics. They will be the way of the homogenize of uh, uh, a polynomial in th homogeneous polynomial in three variable in three in the three different ways. It will be only this. Now we come to O of minus one. Okay, O of minus 1 is simply this. Um, o of 0 will be, uh, here you put, to have uh, o, of, o of n, you have uh, the, 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 the function g1, gij equal 1, g12, one sorry, 1, z2 to the power n. So if you put n equal to 0, you will have the O of 0 is the structural band, because uh, it's just one. So O, the dual, the dual will have G12 equal 1 over Z2 to the power minus 1. OK, I don't care about the fact that you can write it as uh, z2 to the power uh, to z2. OK? And uh, by the way, you see, it's not difficult to see, that gamma p1 o of uh, 1 dual is 0. Why? Because uh, you will not have homogeneous polynomial of degree minus 1. OK? And uh, so, by analogy, uh, you will uh, uh, write this O of 1 dual. You write it by O of minus 1. And uh, uh, since, by the way, you can observe that O of n tensor O of m is isomorphic to O of n plus m, just think about the transition function. You see that this is a good, uh, this is a good notation because uh, you will have that O of one tensor O of minus one will be equal to O of zero. Which is so this is the dual. Okay. So this is the this is uh, in some ways just a notation, but it is consistent with the uh, the ideas. Okay. Uh, um, Pn is the same. It's just an exercise, a little bit boring, because uh, usually you get confused in in uh, in uh, notation, but. Uh, you use 
The point is, uh, uh, one do the exercise I did once, many, me, even more than once in my life, and then uh, you always uh, try, you always say, okay, when I want to understand uh, how things work, I just do for P1, I did works for P1. Okay. Oh, this, this was just uh, uh, a remark on P1, and now uh, we should pass uh, uh, to the new things, uh, which are uh, in the arithmetic uh, context. So just make a resume uh, of what we did the last time. And uh, uh, so we say that we have uh, X projective curve, And then uh, we introduce a peak of x. This was three things. It could be uh, uh, veil divisors. Cartier divisor. Or line bundle. And we see, and we know that this description are uh, up to, up to, up to, up to a principal divisor, up to principal divisor, up to isomorphism. Okay, and uh, so up to. Let me write like this. Because um, and uh, by the way, if x projective, we know that we have a map from peak x to z, called the degree. And using this degree, we were able to construct a height theory for map from uh, x point on variety. Okay? So now we come to uh, uh, to, 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 okay, number, f uh, ring of integer, of a number field K. And, uh, uh, we know, at least as an exercise, that we can define peak X, and this can be defined as veil divisor, which is sum of ni pi, where pi are maximally ideal. And we can do it by Cartier divisor. And uh, there was uh, this exercise which uh, said uh, that this is uh, the same thing, but this is true for every scheme. And then we have line bundles. And we saw as an exercise, at least, that these were principal, uh, sorry, not. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, um, fractional idea. And again, up to, which will be here, a principal uh, uh, divisor coming from uh, element of K. Here will be principal Cartier divisor, and here will be principal fractional idea. And we have this description. In order in order to understand what is missing from here to here, here we have projection. And we know, oh, x is, uh, OK. 
and uh, and this we know we saw last time we saw uh, some times ago this in some way correspond to to an affine curve in our language so something is missing at infinity and by the way we know that to define we can define a map from peak okay compatified to r which was the arithmetic degree but the description of this to do to un, to for uh, this situation was via compactified bail device and uh, we learned that here how we can pass from one to the other so now we understand what we have to do here is to, under to understand what is missing in this information to pass from essentially from here to here from a line bundle to veil divisor from veil divisor to line bundle what is missing here to obtain a degree, we needed to add the compatification, the component of the divisor at infinity. So here we have to add some information of our line bundle at infinity. This is what we have to understand. And now, instead of just giving you a definition, just say, OK, I give you what we should have, I try to let you see what you, you will uh, understand uh, by your own what is needed to, un to add to a line bundle to become a compactified line bundle and to obtain so what i want to say is that we have pick x picks okay this corresponds to bail divisor And then we have a peak compactified, OK, with a map like this. And this comp corresponds to co uh, compactified veil divisor, like this. So here, this corresponds to uh, line bundles up to isomorphism. And uh, now we should understand compactified line bundle and up from here to here in such a way that everything is commutative. So you see this, this corresponds, this corresponds to this, and we have a correspondence like this. This this corresponds to this, and uh, uh, this corresponds to this, and we have a map from here to here. And now we have to understand what is here in order to have a map like this. So this will correspond to compactify, and everything should be coherent. Okay, so let's analyze a little bit locally. We have a, our curve, we have a line bundle over it, and we take a point inside this curve, and we can consider O x of p, the local ring, which is a dvr. OK, with uh, uniformized pi. I don't know if I use, but. Now, if 
I have a map from spec OXP to X. Just call it this IP and IP upper star of L will be a line bundle of, uh, of uh, this affine scheme, so a free OXP module of rank 1. Because it's a, it's a line bundle, so locally free, but yeah, there's no much topology. Uh, and so it's a free, okay, so it is O X P times something, some generator. You remember that when we wrote the product formula, we had uh, that given, uh, we had uh, this product of FP equal to 1. And we computed a norm uh, of, at every place of this. And uh, uh, so you, we see that here a natural norm is arriving because if we decide that norm of 1 at p is equal to 1, generator, we are a little bit generalizing the norm we have, or the periodic norm we have on this string. Remark, the periodic norm norm of 1 equal to 1, and uh, if we are on a curve, we decided that norm of P was equal to, oh, I don't remember, anyway, a number A which is smaller than 1. You have uh, to remember what this is. So you see that as soon as I decide that norm of this is equal to 1, I have a norm on L uh, tilde even tensor uh, Kp, the fraction field. of um, fraction field of uh, of what of uh, o p o x p which is actually oh sorry this is, this is just c of x okay so each time be careful here there is uh, the usual confusion uh, people do. They say, okay, but uh, this is, uh, a, bit, this is a, a free OK module. So essentially there is only a unique metric, a unique, uh, a unique norm which is given by this norm here. It's absolutely false because this is an OK module of rank 
one. So it is true that there exists a unique metric, but this metric in some way, this norm in some way depends on this map. And this line bundle, if I change the line bundle, what I am changing? I'm changing this by some isomorphism. And this isomorphism can be, can give something which is not an isometry. It's like over R. You think R. Over R, there is a norm. But over a vector space of dimension 1, there are infinitely many norms. You just decide that the norm of 1 is uh, 44. No, uh, and this is a, a, a vector space, a normed vector space. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the topology is equivalent. Uh, you can find uh, a morphism give, uh, sending uh, this vector space uh, to the vector space R with the, the norm 1. But this morph is not an isometry and will change things. In particular, you remember that to obtain this formula, you needed to choose particular norms, not arbitrary norms. So you, you, don't, you, you cannot just say, OK, just use uh, two norms which are equivalent in the sense of topology. You will not obtain this formula. So what we learn is that over a curve, a line bundle is giving a norm on every stalk of the line bundle. On every point, you have a norm. And the product of the norm is not said to be 1, but You can make the following exercise. Uh, smooth projective curve. L equal to O of D line bundle. Uh, then uh, uh, D, ah, not exercise, it's given by some covering UI uh, FI. This is a Cartier divisor. Then uh, for every P in X, uh, I can look to norm of FI P, and this do not depend on FI, on I independent on i. Why it is independent on i? Because if I take fj, fi divided by fj is a unit. So it's something who has norm 1. OK? So I can uh, uh, consider the sum from uh, uh, of minus sum of log of norm of fi and this will be equal to the degree of l oh this is not mysterious it's just to say you see norm of fi at p will be equal to pi p v pi of f i times, uh, sorry, will be equal to this times a unit times our generator at p, at p. So if I take minus log of norm of fi will be equal to vp of fi 
and I have, if I decide uh, that, uh, yes. Uh, times log of pi p, and if I uniformize the uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. here it is. We have this formula, and if I uniformize the f on curves. As uh, on curves, we add this. You remember that uh, in the definition of uh, the norm on curves, and uh, you have exactly this. You see, minus this is exactly minus log of fi is equal to pp. So you find this very interesting formula. And I guess that now people are starting to understand what you need at infinity. What is missing? What is missing? E power is should be one correct. Exactly. Uh, it, that is product one. So from this you get that product of the norm is e power minus dp of Sorry? Uh, this formula is for line bundle. And uh, uh, what uh, uh, exactly what you say essentially is correct is uh, that is no 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 that is not sum is uh, be careful this is a divisor is not a function this is a function so so if it was a principal divisor you would obtain zero but uh, for general divisor you obtain the degree of the corresponding line bundle or the degree of the divisor okay. So this formula generalizes, as you remarked, the product formula, but to general divisor. For, for principal divisor, you have zero. For general divisor, you have this formula. And what you observe is that this sum is for every p inside my curve. So what you need at infinite places to obtain a similar formula would be a norm of the vector, a norm over the vector space L restricted to the line bar, L to restricted to the uh, corresponding uh, C. Now I explain more detail, but this formula explain why. It's not that I like to do it, it's because it's natural to do this. P will be again UI FI. And now if I take P, a maximal ideal of OK, I can look to uh, L. Uh, let me write L uh, P from now on. By definition, is uh, L uh, tensor O P. This will be again uh, uh, OK. OP module of rank 1, and I can apply the same argument, and I will have that, um, <laughs> what? That uh, um, I have, since I have this, I have a periodic norm on uh, L tensor K. Okay? And I remark that if I take the sum of uh, all the pi prime number pi or max of minus log 
of norm of uh, fi p i'm sorry if this is a uh, sum of p p uh, d let's say times p this is the right the way to write a cartier divisor as a bell divisor exercises that i gave to you you obtain that this is equal to sum over p in max of vp of d times log of o p divided by p yeah, cardinality because this is exact this is exactly the same argument i gave there so you see that if i sum over the maximal ideal this product this sum i obtain the finite part of the degree of the divisor remember the, the degree of the divisor had two parts one part at infinity and one part at uh, one part at finite places and another part at infinity and so the, inf the, the finite part can be obtained this way. So again, I should put some metric at infinite places and obtain a similar formula for infinite places. Okay, and uh, uh, okay, so now, uh, as before, I will fix embedding of k inside c, and uh, okay, there will be a problem in taking each, okay, I will. and now if I have a line bundle over, okay, I can consider, I will denote L sigma, just L tensor, uh, okay, C, and here is the via, you see, for each sigma, I obtain that C is an okay algebra, so I can consider this is a C vector space, You see that if I give you just a line bundle, this is just a vector space of dimension one. And look at the difference. When I am of a finite space, I get a vector space of dimension one equipped with a norm. Here, I just obtain a vector space of dimension one. So what is missing? A norm. So, an definition. And Hermitian line bundle over <coughs> okay to serve a new chunk is This is the set of infinite places where first L is a line bundle over OK. Second, for every sigma in uh, uh, M infinity, I have. Uh, is a Hermitian metric, which is the same. Hermitian metric or norms of uh, vector space of dimension 1 are the same. In vector space of dimension n, uh, things are a little bit complicated. Hermitian metric uh, on L sigma. 
with the condition that uh, what that uh, if l if sigma is equal to tau conjugate the metric on l sigma is the conjugate of uh, the metric on uh, remember this condition was there also for compactified device otherwise the, the, the product formula didn't work ok And now everything works because uh, given let uh, L equal to O of D and uh, so uh, we can consider uh, D will give uh, an element of L sigma for every sigma and um, which I will call it D sigma is simply an element when you restrict an infinity you take you obtain an a uh, Cartier D uh, of them over uh, a point which is uh, which is an element of a vector space and uh, you obtain that we can associate uh, we associate to d the divisor the compactified divisor uh, d compactified sum of uh, 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 of uh, all the finite plies dp of D P or oh, uh, I think that I put uh, in the def definition of degree I put a plus so I think I should put a m <coughs> minus sum over sigma of log or norm of D sigma uh, Okay, and the degree, the compactified degree of L, this is uh, now, oh sorry, I forgot, a compactified line bundle will be the compactified degree of D. And you can check that this do not depend on the choice of D. If you change D, it will be exactly as before. You will change D. If you change D, you will change D by an element of, uh, by a compactified divisor associated to um, a principal divisor, a principal compactified divisor. It's exactly as before. It's okay? So if... L is equal to O of D compactified, of course, and is equal to O of D prime, then uh, you can s check that D prime minus D is the compactified divisor associated. Oops. Is it the compactified divisor associated to a principal divisor? And so the degree of this is equal to the degree of this because of product formula. And just to remark, the, the degree of 
L is equal to the sum on every places minus log so so we have the exactly the same formula we had over a projective curve And uh, you should also remark, this is a very important, that uh, take uh, M be an element of L. L now from now on is an emission line bundle on OK. M really on on OK. So this corresponds to a global section, an effective device. Then we get that the, the emission degree of L is equal to log cardinality of L divided by S o K A L M OK minus sum of a sigma of log of M sigma. This formula is very nice. It's a very interesting formula. You will see the application after. Because uh, if you take something which is global, you obtain that the degree of L is uh, something which is positive minus something which may be positive or not. And the point is that, uh, remember, over a curve, over a projective curve, you add that if you get, you have of a projective curve taking a global section of a line bundle, if a line bundle have a global section, then uh, if a line bundle has a global section, then the degree of the line bundle was positive. Remember this. But to obtain that something is global, you need to know that is effective over the affine part, but is also effective at infinite places, at, at infinity. For instance, uh, if you, uh, yes, we saw that you could have uh, something which is not, uh, for instance, say if you take over P1, you take the divisor associated to X divided by uh, x minus 1 to the power th 5. Mm, no, this is not a good example. Our p1 is difficult to write. Uh, uh, okay, don't care. Don't care about this because I think I should lose. But in any case, to, to obtain that something is effective, you have to look also to what happens at infinity. And here, this formula is saying the same. It's, saying, it's giving us the same information. So if you take a global section of L, the degree of L, if L has a global section, then the degree of L will be positive if the section as norm lists or equal to 1 also at infinity. And uh, you remember, so look, remark, it, let uh, f be a uh, suppose that you have uh, mm, F um, uh, how you say let uh, L equal to O of D 
D equals UI FI with FI not effective, not uh, a priori, um, not a priori, um, uh, yes, effective, not a priori global section, then uh, you have uh, that P is equal to X, then uh, you have the norm of FI P is smaller or equal than 1, if and uh, only if uh, VP of FI is bigger or equal than 1. So you see that, and this exactly means that D, FI, do not have pole at P. Okay? So you learn that a divisor has a norm less or equal than 1 in a point if and only if it, it is well defined around P. It is, I do not have a pole around P. So, in order to obtain that so we then get the X curve L line bundle H not XL is the sec of uh, um, element S in meromorphic section of L such that norm of S P is less or equal than 1 for every P in X. And this formula which says is essentially showing that things are exactly going in the same direction. And if H naught X L is different from zero, then degree of L is positive. Now you can take OK and you can define H naught arithmetic of L equal to set of uh, S in L tensor K such that a uh, norm of SP is less or equal than 1 for every P in MK, so keeping track, also keeping also the infinity, and you will have that H not arithmetic L is different from zero implies degree arithmetic of L positive because of that formula. So this is another important analogy with uh, uh, arithmetic and the geometry and uh, one can see that this has many consequences. And unfortunately, this is why, this is one of the reasons why arithmetic is much difficult than geometry, is uh, that if x is, an, uh, is a projective curve, this is a vector space over C. So it has a structure, a very nice structure. If x, if you are over OK, this is just a set. Because if you take two section S, S1, S, S2, and you take the sum, it may happen that this is not anymore verified at infinity. And here trouble begins. Why? Because uh, in some way, you, you, you cannot apply uh, all the machinery. You can say, OK, I have a global section. Now I start cohomology. 
because uh, H1 will be the derived functor of uh, H0. The problem is that this is not an abelian category, and this is not a group. So it's not, uh, you cannot apply functor uh, of uh, all the structure of abelian categories and then all the thing doesn't work. You try, it doesn't work. Uh, many people try it. <laughs> so and, uh, so you, you cannot. And uh, there are some very nice ideas uh, by Scoff uh, and uh, Van der Heer and other people who defined a very complicated version of, uh, instead of defining this as H0, they defined a sort of, of measure on the lattice because this is essentially a lattice. And uh, from that, he could write uh, some nice formula. But at the moment, uh, the life is not still. It's still. Uh, so, yeah. Yes. Then, can you tell me whether it is effective or not? The point is this: is now we are uh, uh, okay. Instead of going uh, through height theory, that now you can imagine quite well how it works you work it uh, quite easily in the case of curves, I would like to explain exactly that point and try to give you a proof. I don't know if I will have, I will finish it today, but okay. The point is this. We have now a map from a peak compactified of, of OK as a line bundle compactified to pick OK. And this is subjective because it's very easy that you can put on every line, on every OK module, you can, on every uh, line bundle over OK, on every fraction idea, you can put some metric. But it's not unique. You have all the possible metric you can put on one on the trivial bound. So you have a kernel. What is this kernel? Just to understand. Let's do over Z. Over Z, a line bundle is Z times something. Why? Because every line bundle is principal because the Picard group is trivial. OK? So we have an embedding sigma of uh, k of q inside c, and we can give a norm. It's just giving an ele a no the norm of one. So we have norm of one is equal to a positive number a positive. And what is what is uh, the degree of L, arithmetic degree of L, will be, OK, the log cardinality of L divided 1 Z, which is 0. So this element, no. <laughs> this element uh, has cardinality 1, so the log is 0, so this number is 0, minus log of A. Here is the degree of a line band. Okay? Now, uh, this is the degree of the trivial line band. And uh, by the way, check that the degree of L is positive if and only if a is smaller than 1. OK? And you are confirming this section, this, uh, this thing. So the only all possible metric on the trivial bundle, in this case, this is R positive, which is not compact. And in the general case, you will have uh, uh, something similar. OK, and then uh, you can work. Yeah. 
or you have uh, your root of unity, which uh, can, you have to caution by root of unity. Root of unity doesn't change matrix, so you can always multiply by root of unity. Hmm? Sorry? By units. Sorry? By units. Exactly. So you see that uh, in this description, you have, um, you have uh, um, many metrics, many possible stru emission structure over Z, over the trivial bundle. And you can understand that over uh, the trivial bundle over a, a number field, it's the same. You, you can choose what happens at infinity. And, uh, okay, but okay, uh, I will give you now a, def a proof of the, f uh, the following basic fact. Speak. Uh, uh, without hat. Okay. It's fine. This is I think the main uh, one of the main theorem in uh, in uh, arithmetic in uh, in uh, ar um, algebraic number theory. Okay, uh, just to uh, to do not make too many illusions. Uh, a posteriori, at the end uh, of the day, you will go back at home and you will say, oh, but the, pre the proof he gave to me is the classical proof. <laughs> it's not a new proof. Uh, I, I completely agree with you. The only important point is the point of view. You will see how you can think to this proof how, as a geometric proof. Something which is, uh, from geometry, is clear. And then you say, in arithmetic, I should find something in, in, the, in the same direction. So just, uh, uh, ah, OK. Geometry is clear for somebody who likes geometry. I mean, <laughs> if you are coming from geometry, something seems for you very, uh, very natural. So you imagine that in arithmetic, things should be the same. So just so look. To geometry. In geometry, we have a peak x projective curve, and uh, you have the peak x is not finite, but you know that is j of x at times z, and j of x are line bundle of degree 0 modulo equivalence. And uh, the classical theorem is, and uh, you can prove that this in other an algebraic variety. This can be proved uh, in many ways, but suppose that you know it. So you suppose that it has a structure. And uh, you remember last day, last time I said um, uh, compact is compact, uh, something compact in, in geometry corresponds to something finite in arithmetic. So in particular, this is compact. And the fact that this variety is compact is corresponding to the fact that this group is finite. So I, you can ask why, because I can tell you. You can always put the matrix on each of the line band in such a way that degree is 0. So you imagine that each, uh, you are looking just uh, to line bundle of degree 0, and then uh, you imagine that they should be compact, so finite. So instead of taking this, you can take the subgroup of line bundle of degree 0. You will also have a subjective map. And uh, you will say that this should be compact. So how do you prove this From pe for people who know algebraic geometry? You take 
you, you, you remark that it suffices to take the line bundle of degree, uh, I don't remember, uh, 2G, uh, I don't know, uh, G, G plus 1. Line bundle of degree G, well, these are of X, line bundle Now it suffices G, I think, of degree G. And if I prove that this is compact, this will be compact. Because uh, this is isomorphic to J of X. Simply take a line bundle and send to L times G O of G times a point. You see, each time you have a line bundle of degree 0, you will find a line bundle of degree G by taking this and giving a line bundle of degree G. You can always make tensor by O of my own minus G times, and you will obtain that. So, so these are isomorphic. So it suffices to prove that this is 0. Sorry, this is compact. Now, let L of degree G, uh, G is the genus of X, sorry, I forgot, <laughs> is the genus of, of X, and uh, uh, I will say that L is equal to O of D, where D is a thing. And this is Riemann Rock theorem. Either you know what is it or don't care. Just know that there is a theorem which says L is equal to O of D uh, for D effective, and this is due to the fact. The key of L is equal to the degree of L minus G plus 1. So this will be equal to 1. So the degree positive, and so H naught of L is positive. And you know, or you don't. Doesn't matter. Just keep this as information. So there is a theorem which is a very nice theorem, important theorem in algebraic geometry which says that if L is of degree G, G the genus of X, then L is effective. OK? And now you can so there exists D equal to sum Ni Pi such that sum of Ni is equal to G and uh, L is equal to OK, now I can look to the symmetric product x times x g times. This is x times x times x g times divided by the symmetric group of g times. So that means that you are looking to divisors, you are looking to uh, G, G pole, and you don't care about the order. So two G poles are the same if you can obtain one from the other by permutation. OK? And uh, you see that this is the set of effective divisors of degree G. Why this? Because uh, you take uh, a tuple here, P1, Pg, the class. And uh, this class uh, doesn't care about the order. 
So you can associate to this sum of pi. They could be the same from time to time. Okay? Okay? G, what is this? This is uh, the product divided the symmetric group. So I means that I don't care about, it means that the tuple, when I don't care about the order. So this set is the set of 50 divisor. Okay? And this is a quotient of a compact uh, set. So it's compact. Okay? And now, what he's saying, and of course, I have a map from here to pick G, which sends uh, the divisor sum of pi to O of sum of pi. Just saying, a divisor is sent so to his line bundle. Okay? And what he say what this Riemann Rock theorem says, he says that it is surjective. So this map is surjective. So this is compact, this is compact. So this is compact. And you say what this have to say to to So this is the main reason why uh, line, uh, why the Picard group is compact. And now we will understand, uh, and uh, posteriori you will see that this is exactly the same proof. It's exactly the same idea. We will prove that the Picard group of uh, or that the, the class group is finite and it is exactly the same idea. Just a small uh, uh, resume of what I said. I say instead of working with J of zero, of line bundle of degree zero, I work with line bundle of degree something. And this something is a number which do not depend on the line bundle, but depends only on the curve. And I prove it that this line bundle, I know, I know from some uh, weird reason that each of these line bundle is effective. And then I could conclude it's three, three steps. First step, line bundle of degree i degree, second step, this line bundle are effective, third step, conclusion. So this, you will see the structure of this. What time is it? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. No, I can, otherwise, I will, uh, I will prove him a rock next time. Because uh, it is important to remark how Riemann Rock is related to arithmetic? Arithmetic, uh, uh, what Riemann Rock is in geometry, corresponds to something which is called uh, uh, the, um, the the Minkowski theorem, or by, or seen from far, also Siegel lemma. It is very important to understand that the two things are the same. And here we see it. So, first step. Let L, now there exists a constant depending only on OK such that if L compactify a uh, Hermitian line bundle is such that Uh, a degree 
of L is bigger than this constant, then H not arithmetic of L is not zero. Riemann rock. Step two. Which was to say, instead of working on degree zero, I can work with degree I, higher degree. Let L be a element of peak. OK, no metric. I can put on L a metric such that degree of L is equal to C OK plus epsilon fix it fix epsilon even B if you want Apply theorem one. No, apply step one, and uh, you obtain that L is equal O of D compactified, such that D is equal to sum of n i p i plus sum of log plus sum of lambda sigma sigma with lambda sigma positive because it's effective okay degree of d is equal to C of OK plus Epsilon. So, so, sum of NI of O L O divided pi I P I cardinality of O divided O P pi I plus sum of lambda sigma small or equal is equal to C of O K plus epsilon. Which means that sum of ni log cardinality o o divided pi is less or equal than c of ok plus epsilon because these are positive. Okay, and now we are finished because. The pi can be so that means the norm of pi is bounded. Uh, and i are positive. And i are uh, so uh, the pi are bounded, and so they can be only on a finite list, which are all the divisor which are over some. So uh, the pi are bounded and ni are bounded. And uh, if you want, this should be the step three to come back to peak zero.
we have a map from peak arithmetic peak of a line bundle of degree c c of ok plus epsilon to peak ok which is subjective which is just saying that every line bundle every ok module can be equipped by a metric of degree well, a metric of degree that this map I forgot to say as a poetic name because it's forgotten the infinite. Uh, and uh, and now it's the thing is fish because each and this is means that sum of n i p i plus sum of lambda i sigma i is sent to sum of n i p i. And we just proved that the pi can be only on finite set, and the ni can be only on a finite set. So it's finite. Okay. And I think it would be, but it's not very long. But uh, uh, it would be better to 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 prove the Riemann rock next time for arithmetic case. In the geometric, I will not prove it. It will take. Uh, 15 20 minutes, but it requires a little bit of work. I'm using, no, <laughs> I'm using two things. I'm using that OK is a dedicated domain, and uh, such that uh, if you take all the, the, the norm of uh, element with norm, um, they are only finitely many. And this is uh, coming from the fact. That is, uh, the norm is over z. Over z, you have only finite. You have only finitely many primes, which are norms less than p, less than c. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 no, not easily, but not. Uh, the point is that uh, you. This is the difficult one because you have a subjection from uh, a line bundle. Okay, we. Just I can say just if you k if you take O K S spec O O K S is, is a open set in spec O K and you can prove by general nonsense that you have a map from peak O K to peak O K S which is subjective and you can describe the kernel. The kernel uh, is supported, uh, is the subgroup, uh, how you say, the subgroup generated by the P in S. So the P in S define a, a subgroup here, and you have this. In particular, this is subjective. So that means that if this is finite, this is finite. So it, it implies also this. Like a line bundle of a P1 are complicated, line bundle of Z are simple. 